Hi everyone, my name is Suresh. I'm here from Amalu. Have any of you been invited to a wedding that you couldn't physically attend? Wouldn't it be nice if you could actually view that wedding or any other event and also socialize and interact with the people that are at the wedding or event or that couldn't attend it? Let me explain a little more. There's a lot of platforms where you can view events like YouTube or cable TV, but there's little or no interaction. And on the other side, you have platforms like Skype or Google Hangouts where you can socialize a lot, but it's hard to really view events on those platforms. So what we want to do at Amalu is provide a single platform to view events and socialize on multiple levels as you're viewing those events. In the last four months, we've designed and developed the website. Once a user logs in, this is sort of what they see. This is actually an event from Lincoln High School. It's a basketball game that we streamed on our platform as a test. As you can see on the left side, users can see activities of their friends, what comments they've made, what they like. At the bottom left, they can add friends. They can make comments. And then on the bottom right, you, ca you have chat options. You can do a chat group or a one one-on-one -on -one chat. So the best aspect of putting it on a single platform is that you can socialize at a macro level and a micro level. So imagine there's 5,000 viewers and it's a much bigger event. You can see everyone else that's watching it. You can add them as friends. You can socialize with them, assuming they accept your invitation. Or you can socialize on a micro level. It could be a small group of CUNY classmates. It could be a one-on-one -on -one chat with your spouse, assuming you only have one spouse, or in any other way. So we launched the website last month. We did a couple free test runs with schools for particular events. We're launching the app next month. In the last four months, we visited close to 200 schools. We met with teachers, principals, parent-teacher coordinators. They like the idea a lot because they don't have a platform like that right now, especially where students and parents can interact with both the content provider and amongst themselves. So we actually have three schools that we signed up that want to stream events once the app is live, because everything is mobile. What's interesting about meeting the teachers is some of them came to us and said they want to use this platform to stream events at their religious institutions. It wasn't a sector we even thought of, but when they said, we jumped on it and said, of course, this is perfect for religious <laughs> institutions. So since then, we met with a lot of religious institutions, and we have two institutions that are ready to stream events. Again, they want to wait uh, once the app is ready, and then uh, we'll be streaming those events. Next, we want to focus on weddings, and then could be trade shows, music concerts, and so forth. Just in the US alone, there are around 18 million events a year. Had I known this event was streamed on Facebook Live, we would have proposed to stream it on Amalu, but maybe next year. <laughs> Uh, and the budget for these events is around 280 billion. So why us? Uh, we have a great team. I've already introduced myself. Seku is the finance guy, crunching numbers, always making sure that it's just not about the website or the app, but it's also about making money. Ashish is the designer who's designed both the website and now the app. And Chandran is the tech guru that's actually bringing the design to reality in the website and the app. So there is quite a bit of competition. Uh, just as an example for schools, there's a platform called The Cube where they just stream football games. Again, the biggest advantage or differentiator we have is that none of these platforms offer a socializing and streaming aspect. So if you're watching that game, you have to call someone and discuss the game, whereas on our platform, you could do video chat, audio chat, text chat, you can play games, all that while watching the video content. So we have three plans that we have set up uh, for all these institutions, and this is sort of the plan to targeting different sectors in the next few years. And our goal is to get to 15,000 events in the next three years by the end of 2020 with cumulative revenue of around $3 million. So with that, if you have any questions. Just...
Sure. No, actually, so for the schools and religious institutions, they already have media club uh, for schools. They have media clubs. They already have the video cameras. They're actually recording these events. We're just providing a platform to stream them. So one thing with schools, especially, is they don't want to put any of the most of the content on YouTube that's being recorded at the school, just for uh, issues as far as privacy for the for the kids. So this is very restricted in that the school can grant access to who they want to watch the event. Same thing if you look at weddings, there are actually some weddings being streamed on Facebook Live and Skype, but generally speaking, users want it more restrictive to whoever they invite to watch the event rather than everybody on Facebook. The other aspect is none of the content here can be shared. So it's, it's really restricted by the content provider. They control access to the, to the content, and they, they're the only ones that can share it if, if, they, if they choose to. The, the biggest thing is that schools generally don't want it, say, on Facebook or YouTube just because Yeah, whereas here, it's only granted based on the event organizer. And one other aspect uh, that you mentioned was the chat. So with Facebook Live and YouTube Live, you sort of have a comment slash chat section where you can post comments and reply to it. So the difference here is you can do that, but you can also interact on a much smaller level, one-on-one -on -one chat. You could play a game as you're watching maybe a football game. You could share files, you could video chat, audio chat, sort of like creating a virtual living room while you're viewing this content. So you can't be anonymous if you Yes, you, you have to log in, yes. Uh, there's Facebook login, Twitter login, Google login, and regular sign up, so. What to focus on out of the two? Are you going to continue to go after this year? What is your plan in terms of your five So this year we want to focus primarily on schools and religious institutions. We're still just launching and want to have users. Although we're we're not charging this year, we just want to get their feedback on what is working, what functionality are they using more, what functionality are they using less. Weddings, trade shows, music concerts, really the events that where we can charge premium uh, value because there's other aspects. Uh, as an example, for weddings, there's a way that users can post video comments as they're watching the wedding or, or they could be physically at the wedding or uh, at home. So those are sort of the premium events that we want to eventually focus on. Um, we'll still be focusing on schools, but probably from next year, the focus will be more towards weddings because it's premium uh, revenue generated. What is your sense about schools' uh, willingness to pay versus, say, religious institutions' willingness and ability to pay? So, as much as the schools like, there is some hesitation to actually pay just because of budget cuts. Uh, the reason we came up with this plan is for New York City schools, they have a restriction of $250 where if it's above that, they need to get bids. But if it's below that, it's up to the principal or even sometimes the parent coordinator to sanction it. There are a lot of events at schools where a lot of uh, schools come together, math competitions, uh, athletic events, and so forth, where they would pay for these events. But an individual school might be hard to target where they just have one event. Uh, one of the schools that we signed up has an alumni event coming up. It's a private school and they usually give trophies to the alumni and then ask them for donations. The reason they wanted this is they want to restrict it to who they invite the other alumni and obviously ask them for donations as they're watching the event. So. Okay, great, thank you.